One of the funnest ways to catch fish is on a buzz bait. A buzz bait is definitely one of my confidence baits for catching giant fish, basically post spawn through late fall. Today, we're gonna break down our favorite buzz baits to throw, how we fish them, any alterations we make so that you guys can learn what we're doing with buzz baits. So hopefully we can all catch more fish. If you're ready, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. Welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku, being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. We are The Hookup Tackle USA. Today, we are breaking down buzz baits, one of my favorite baits in the entire world. This is one of those baits that gets me in trouble, Jeff. Mm. This is one of those baits where I always want them to eat a buzz bait. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times you just don't want to eat a buzz bait, but if I get one bite on a buzz bait, dude, I'm screwed. Oh, it's done, huh? It's done. It's all I can think about there. Yep. So everything else just goes out the window and I throw a buzz bait all day. And that's really a couple of reasons. A, it's super fun to catch them on a buzz bait. And B, it's a great way to catch giants. Some of my biggest fish, especially as we get into summer and fall, have come on buzz baits. So I just have a lot of confidence on it. So today we're gonna break down our approach on buzz baits, which ones we're throwing, how we're fishing them, why we're choosing one buzz bait over the other, so that you guys can, you know, have some insight as to how we do it. Hopefully you guys can share with us what you guys are doing as well, and we can all become better buzz bait fishermen. Are you ready, Jeff? Yep. All right, so I have in my hands the Mega Bass Jamaica Boa. So this bait came out last year and has quickly kind of become the staple for us, the staple for me, the staple for a lot of guys, really. This is becoming my starting point buzz bait. Now, Jamaica Boa is available in a bunch of colors. There's whites, there's shads, there's blacks, green pumpkins, all the colors that you need in a buzz bait. But the reason why this has become my go-to is because I can do a lot of different things with this bait. First and foremost, it is a buzz bait that is designed to cast very easy. If you look at the shape of the buzz bait, the weight of the head comes all the way even back onto the shank of the hook. So buzz baits historically have been very difficult to throw. They've been hard baits to throw because you have this big blade that's basically catching the wind and then you have this small little head in the middle of the bait and it's just an awkward bait. There's nothing really to help with the trajectory to get the bait out there, right? So with the Jamaica Boa, they have weighted it basically in the back of the bait so that when you cast, it throws like a rocket. I mean, you can chuck this thing through the wind as far as you wanna go. It weighs half an ounce. So it's just the perfect, easy casting buzz bait that I can just tie on, cover a lot of ground with. If I'm not sure what's happening, this is a great option to go. A couple other things with this buzz bait that are important to note. It has this special design blade, so you notice it's a little bit unique in the bend there. They call it a manta prop. It was inspired by manta rays. It's a full bending blade. There's no real true flat parts of it. <clears throat> so that aids also in casting because there's nothing flat for it to catch on. It creates a very unique and soft sound under the water. When they come out of the package with a just simple kind of push down on the wire there, you will find that the blade will stop on this kind of metal clacker, right? So as this spins around, it's going to hit that clacker. Now on the cast, what's nice is that it will hit that piece and it will stop and it will prevent it from spinning in the air. A lot of times when you go to cast, you'll cast and you'll just hear it go, right? 
and that's your blade spinning around in the air and slowing the buzz bait down. And inevitably, when you hear that, you usually look down and your reel's going, right? Which is no bueno. So that helps make the cast that much easier because it kind of locks it in place and prevents it from doing a lot of backspin. Once it lands in the water, then this blade is clacking on that piece and it's creating that kind of knock. So it's not a super loud knock like it would be with a clacker, but it's some sound and it's hitting it. It's creating a little bit of volume, which is great on days where you get a little bit of wind, get a little bit of noise, and you need your buzz bait just to stand out. Now on days when you don't want that sound, merely just a simple flex out and it pulls it away from that clacker and now you have a totally silent, just squeaking buzz bait. So one buzz bait with just a simple push in, pull out, right? You get two in one basically with a buzz bait, which I find to be really useful. When they really start chewing a buzz bait, for us, a lot of times it's like slick, calm, and then you get these little breezes, or you'll turn the corner and it'll be windy. So I can just really simply just adjust it if I need more or less volume as I go. It's got a great hook on it. This also makes a great buzz bait to pull the skirt off and add a plastic trailer, which we will talk about here in a second. But nine times out of 10, I take it out of the package, I throw it how it is, I adjust the arm accordingly, whether I want sound or not, just a great all-around option, that's the Jamaica Boa. Now, the next buzz bait I usually pick up if they're not eating that is the Jackal Firecracker. Now, this is one of my absolute favorite buzz baits. I would say before the Jamaica Boa came on the market, this was my go-to buzz bait. Now, the Firecracker, again, it's offered in you know shads and blacks and bluegills, all the different shades that you need a buzz bait to be in. So like the Jamaica Boa, the Firecracker has, you know, lots of great high-end components. It's available in a 3 8 and a half ounce. I find that this doesn't cast quite as well as the Boa does. It's a smaller profile, right? So here's a half ounce versus a half ounce. You can see the Mega Bass is definitely larger than the Firecracker, right? Doesn't throw quite as easy because you are going to get that traditional, you know, kind of as you cast with that blade, right? But what the Firecracker does amazingly well is it has this little prop that sits on the blade. And this will spin at the same time this is spinning. And when these two things clack against each other, it creates a very, very loud sound in the water. You'll hear it. it's the loudest of all the buzz baits that I'm gonna show you today. It's incredibly loud. So when the fish are suspending or when it's really windy, right? If it's early morning and you know they're smoking top water and you get out there and it's just, it's rolling, right? It's just got all this noise in the lake. This is a great one that you can still fish through those waves, through that chop, and they will find it because it's so noisy. Now, little tip, the firecracker also comes with this little brass rivet on the end that's designed to get squeakier and squeakier and squeakier and squeakier as it goes. If you like this profile, which I do, and if you like this squeak, which we all love the squeak, right? But you don't want this crazy, you know, really loud knock. Taking some pliers or some, you know, cutters, you can cut this piece off, take it off your shaft, and then you'll just have a totally silent, squeaky version of the firecracker. And sometimes that really makes a difference and they smoke it. So I have some that are rigged up both with the clacker and without, and that way I'm prepared for whatever condition I need. While we are on the topic of loud buzz bait, sometimes the fish just want that straight clacking sound. And when they do, I don't think there is a better clacker buzz bait than the OSP Buzz Zero 2 Beat. Now, what OSP did is they set out to create a buzz bait that not only threw great, it could make great casts by, again, extending the weight down the shaft of the hook, similar to the Jamaica Boa. It has all the main features you would expect in a premium buzzbait hand tied skirt, right? Great hook. They made a specially designed head so that it comes up and over cover very well. But what they discovered is that clacker buzzbaits didn't cast very well because the clacker piece that everybody was using was aluminum. 
right? And they found that aluminum was so light that it just created one more thing to kind of get in the way to catch wind on the cast. So OSP went back to the drawing board, played with a bunch of different materials, and settled on brass. So this is one of the only buzz baits I know of that uses a brass clacker in the middle. And the brass does two things. A, it's heavier, so as the blade comes down to it, as you cast, it's heavy enough to where it kind of supports the blade to where it throws easily without that blade and creating a backlash problem for you. The other thing is, is once it's in the water and it's clacking, that brass is going to give a totally different sound than all the other clacker buzz baits. So if you guys are fishing an area and they are chewing a buzz bait and everybody else is throwing your traditional clacker that have aluminum clackers on them, by going to the brass, it's gonna give you a different sound, further casting, you're really gonna enjoy the experience. And it's available in a ton of colors. It's available in a normal size. It's available in a little pup size, right? And it's also available in a big size that they call the strong size, right? And the strong size is just gonna feature a little heavier gauge wire. It's gonna feature big, thick, living rubber skirt, right? That's hand cut, hand trimmed. to just give you a big, bulky package down there. So, some great options, some great color range, a really great buzz bait from OSP. That is the Buzz Beat 2. Check it out. All right, now let's go the opposite direction. Sometimes they don't want a big, loud, noisy buzz bait. Sometimes they want something really quiet. Sometimes they want something that's got more of a squeak to it and less of a knock. This has been a staple out here on the West Coast for decades. Still, I've got probably 50 of these things in my box, and this is the go-to when they really are shying away from other buzz baits. This is the Gary Yamamoto buzz bait. Okay, no fancy name, all right? Nothing really fancy about this thing at all. It's pretty cheap. It's just a rubber banded skirt. It's exactly the same as it's been for 30 years, right? But it's a great buzz bait that has an amazing squeak to it. So when they get picky, when they start shying away from those louder, clackier, knockier type buzz baits, this guy, the more you throw it, the squeakier it's gonna get. And I think we even talked about this on a video at some point, Jeff, that this buzz bait is responsible for me losing my antenna on my truck. Yeah. Because we used to drive from our home to the lake and we would tie these to our antennas and then just drive. And by the time we got to the lake, this would spin enough to where it, it would groove little grooves into the rivets and the balls and it'd be super squeaky when we got to the lake. And uh, I had too many of them on the antenna and antenna broke off. But it's a great one for you know those times when it's slick calm, maybe crystal clear. You need some kind of sound to draw them to it, but it needs to be more of a squeak and less of a knock so you're not scaring them. The Yamamoto Buzzbait, no brainer here, great option. The other one that we will use when they get super, super picky is the Megabass V4 Buzzbait. Now this is the twin prop, plastic prop version. The only challenge to this guy, well two challenges. First challenge is it's relatively small. Okay, so it's a lightweight buzz bait. This is actually one that a lot of guys will choose to throw on their spinning gear, right? Instead of casting, but it's 5 16 of an ounce. So it's a lot lighter weight than some of these other baits. You can see it's got the dual twin prop, so it's gonna be very quiet. It's more of a swoosh through the water. It's more of just a as it comes through versus a loud clack. This is a great one when the fish are feeding on fry, when they're feeding on smaller bait, uh, or they're positioned where they will eat a buzz bait, but they've just seen too many damn buzz baits, right? So you need to downsize, you need to finesse a little bit. It's got a unique shaped head that is designed to bounce up and over cover. So if you look at the bend of this, as this comes and hits a log, it's going to lift over the log and back down so you're not snagging it. So it comes through very easily. It's like all Mega Best products, it's very well made, but it is definitely a specific use buzz bait. Because it's so small, it's hard to just throw as your daily use buzz bait. Unless you guys are fishing like streams, <clears throat> ponds, smaller bodies of water, you guys would probably just destroy them on this thing. But in the big lakes, 
Big River Systems. This is the guy that I'm gonna go to when they start shying away from the full-size buzz bait. They're shying away from the sound, but they're still positioned in the same areas. I can extend my buzz bait season out by a few more weeks by dropping down in size. All right, and the last style of buzz bait that we incorporate into our arsenal is a style of buzz bait that's become very, very popular over the last couple of years. Dirty Jigs makes a great one. Strike King actually makes a great one. And you can alter any of the other ones that we've spoken about to do similar things. But this is the Dirty Jigs Scott Canterbury Pro Buzz. And you'll notice it's basically just, you know, plain lead and it comes with a little horny toad. And you're gonna basically bring that horny toad up and over the spinnerbait. I will show you guys how to do this and what this will look like. Now this is a style that we will go to when <clears throat> we want to skip the buzz bait, right? So anytime that I'm wanting to skip it up underneath a dock, anytime I wanted to put it up underneath a tree, and I need that buzz bait to really skip on the surface, I find that it's much easier to skip with a solid body versus skirt material. Now, certainly you can add, you know, some trailers to skirt material, and we'll talk about that here in a second, but the other thing this does is this gives the fish something solid when they're just sucking, right? So here, first things first, let me let me put it up on there. And you can use the included toad that comes with the bait. You can use your own toad, of course, you know, or whatever soft plastic bait you want to use, but basically you're just gonna push your soft plastic up and over, all the way over, so that it's sitting on top of that. Usually, if I'm being super serious about it, I'm going to super glue that now on there. And sometimes I'll even just put super glue on that lead first before I thread the bait all the way up, and that'll just help hold it, right? So now I have something solid that will literally skip up underneath wherever I'm skipping it. And if the fish are coming up and they're just sucking, right? When it's just skirt material, right? When all it is is skirt and they're sucking, there's not much body there, right? You get a little bit of lead, but you basically that's the only thing there. So they're sucking, but there's not a lot for them to really suck into their mouth, right? Whereas when you've got this big chunk of plastic, right? And they're sucking, there's this nice, thick, meaty meal that's gonna fit into their mouth. So you're gonna find that they're gonna get the bait in their mouth a lot more when you have a soft plastic on it versus just the straight skirt material. Now, you don't have to, you know, go out and buy different buzz baits if you need to alter them. You will find that a lot of guys will just go to a bait like this, Kitek, like the 4.3 Kitek is super popular. You can just pull the skirt off, right? Pull the skirt off your bait, run your soft plastic up, and you basically have altered it. So, you know, here's a Jamaica Boa. This is the one that I do probably the most, uh, just because again, I like the versatility of being able to alter this arm and this blade. I merely just take the skirt off, add my favorite soft plastic trailer, whether it be a Kitek, a Beaver, or whatever, and I've got something that's got a little bit more body to it. So, as far as soft plastic baits, that I would add to these. Of course, you could throw any toad style bait. So like a horny toad or any you know, of your favorite toads, those work great. Other ones that work really well, uh, Kitek Fat Swing Impact. This is a no brainer. Tons of people use this. It looks great. It swims just like a fish. Tons of colors. You can match it to your bait fish. Great option. The OSP Doe Live Beaver. Uh, in the four inch size is a sleeper. This is one that I love to throw because it just changes the motion instead of a real big wide paddle back there, it's just gonna have kind of this swimming type motion. It's a great one. <clears throat> the other one that gets way overlooked is the Madness Sepper 5. So it's gonna keep you in a fish type look. It's going to have a segment, so it's gonna have a very natural looking swim to it. Uh, you'll be amazed how lifelike it looks under the water and they absolutely smoke it. So any of those styles will work it, of course, you know, there's no rules to this, right? So whatever trailer you like works great. You wanna put a mag draft on it. You wanna put a Z crawl on it. You wanna put, it doesn't matter, right? Whatever fits for there and whatever they're eating is the right answer. Just feel free to alter it and change it. I think you'll find it'll skip better. And when they're just lightly sucking, you're gonna hook them a lot better. 
we pause for a minute to bring you this special reporting. If you're fishing in small waters and you need a small, compact, loud buzz bait, the I'm a Little Voice is an amazing choice. It's my favorite buzz bait to throw when I'm fishing in the river. Uh, it's loud, it's small, and you gotta work it kind of fast, but uh, it's gonna get you bit. They smoke it? They smoke it. Run it over rapids, that's what I like to do. I don't like to do the traditional bank burning with it. I'll just run it on top of the rapids where I know the fish will be and they'll just, they'll smoke it. Would it be good for a pond? Yes. Small waters, always. Sick. Always insightful info from Griff. Always. Thank you, Griff. All right, we didn't talk about trailers, so let's touch base on that very briefly. So, <clears throat> Anymore, a lot of buzz baits will come kind of right out of the package with some longer material that you know is designed to look like a trailer so you don't have to add a soft plastic trailer. So when do we add trailers? When do we add trailer hooks, right? When are we altering these things? So for me, I want the easiest way to get a bass on my line and into the boat. So that usually means taking it out of the package, tying it on and throwing it. Right, so most of the time, I would say, especially with some of these heavier baits that I know are gonna be working a little slower, I throw it just like this with just straight skirt material. Now, again, getting back to what we talked about with the soft plastic trailer, if they are just kind of sucking at it, right? And they're more open water and they're just kind of sucking at it and they're not fully getting it and I see that they're sucking it and they're just missing it a lot of times, that's when I will add a trailer. Now, for me, I don't want the trailer to necessarily alter the movement of the buzz bait. The buzz bait is going to draw the attention, you know, based on the flash and the skirt. It's got enough movement already. All I want the trailer to do is I want to just add a trailer to the bait so that it has some plastic, so it has a little bit of mass, so that when the fish are sucking at it, there's something there for them to actually suck in, right? That's really the only thing the trailer is doing for me. Now, <clears throat> as long as I'm adding a trailer, let's alter the color if we need to, right? So, a lot of times if I'm throwing a straight white or a shad, you know, maybe I'll add like a chartreuse split tail trailer just to give it a little bit of color you know, just a little bit of depth. A lot of times when I'm throwing a black buzz bait, maybe I add a blue or a chartreuse, just to give it a little bit of depth and just, you know, something different, right? So for me, zoom split tail trailer, that's usually the trailer I'll add because it doesn't really affect or change the swim of the buzz bait. You can also do, you know, the Kitek fat swing impact is a great one. It's just gonna slow it down a little bit because it's gonna require a little bit more water to get that tail to push, but that can be a great one. It's easy to add. Almost everybody has them in their boat. You could do the four three size or three eight size and it adds that nice fish type look to your buzz bait. The other trailer, and we've talked about this before, that I will throw a lot is the Yamamoto Fat Ica. Now, this guy, is a trailer that I'm adding for a different reason. And this was something that a friend of mine, John Strelick, taught me years and years ago. But the fat Ica doesn't really look like anything on the back of the buzz bait, right? So it's not gonna really give a lot of look. This is a very thick piece of Yamamoto plastic, right? It's highly salted, very thick, very heavy. But what I'll do on the fat Ica is I will string it on there Right, and I'll put it like this on the buzz bait so that it adds a lot of weight to the back of my buzz bait for longer casts or cast into the wind. Remember, buzz baits suck to throw into the wind or really long cast. So by adding this heavy plastic back there, it just gives me something bulky that helps me make a really long cast and it gives the fish something to when they're sucking, there's actually something there for them to get it into their mouth. Okay, and then finally, you know, trailer hooks is, you know, something that we will add to the buzz bait early and late in the season when they're not quite fully committing, right? So majority of time, I'd say probably 99% of the time when I start throwing a buzz bait, I throw it just like this without a trailer hook. And that's because when they're eating a buzz bait, they, they fucking eat it, 
right? It is down in their crusher, and I don't want that trailer hook sitting back there too far to where it's gonna nick them in the gills or get them in the gut and hurt the fish, right? So I can very quickly tell if I'm gonna need a trailer or not. If I'm throwing it and the fish are, whoop, they're on it, I know I'm good. So if they miss a buzz bait or two, right? I get a couple strikes and they miss, then that's when I generally will go and I will add a soft plastic trailer to it. And nine times out of 10, that solves it and they get it. If the trailer's on there and they're still missing it, that's when I will go and I will add a trailer hook to it. So a bunch of different kinds of trailer hooks. I prefer the kind that slide over the hook and I can just use a stopper to hold it in place. But I want that trailer hook to be free swinging. I find that when they get that back hook, they don't get the leverage of the buzz bait to toss it when it's free swinging. When it's really fixed, right, in one place, then they get to use the leverage of the buzz bait when they come up and shake their head. Since most of the fish we're catching are really shallow, they are going to jump, right? I lose a lot more fish on that style of hook. So whatever style you like, I like the owners. You know, Decoy makes a great one, Ryugi makes a great one. Doesn't matter, whatever style you like is fine. I just really prefer it to have that free pivot point on there so I can land more of those fish. All right, guys, that is a wrap. That is an insight and a look into uh, the buzz baits that we are throwing, when we're choosing them, why we're choosing them. Hopefully that was insightful. If you guys have any questions, Jeff is gonna leave links to all the products in the description, uh, but certainly ask me any questions you have down below in the comments and I will get to it. If we left out some of your favorite buzz baits, we'd love to hear what they are because we want to uh, learn from you as well. So definitely drop that down below in the comments also. And uh, we look forward to just sharing all the buzz bait love as a community so we can all jack them this year on the buzz bait. So until next time, on behalf of myself, Griff, Jeff, family, everybody that's here. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the support. Thank you for your business. Until next time, enjoy the buzz baits. Go jack some big topwater fish. Peace until next time.